Hi, fishy folks. I'm here with Callie again, fellow fish snook, who's going to talk about what medicines she recommends to have on hand and why. Exactly. Okay. So, um, first and foremost, you need parasite control. Um, general care, I tend to use and have on hand uh, just as a, a general preventative. Most things come in with something. Um, and you might not actually see it until your fish is super skinny looking and at that point it's really really hard to bring the fish back. Um, so especially with parasites, you know, just preventative treatment is very very important. Uh, it can also help to have a ick medication on hand, um, you know, whatever your, your favorite medication is on that. Uh, also salt. Um, can we, let's just talk about John Care for a second. Okay. Do you treat every fish that comes into your fish shelf with general cure? Um, depends on who they're coming from. If they're coming from a store, yes. Right. If they're coming from a person where I've been in their fish room before and I know how they treat their fish, maybe not. Hmm. Or maybe I do. If I if I know them and I don't like what they do. <laughs> I treat every fish that comes in that fish room, no matter where it comes from, mm -hmm. with general cure and uh, Ickex and EM erythromycin. Mm -hmm. That's what I do every fish I get. Okay. So I have the big jars of this that I use a lot of. Okay. Yeah, right. I like the bulk. Yeah. I can me do too. scoops and run around with it. Where is the. I can't find the expiration. That's what I was looking for. Should be printed. That's right, it should be, but I don't see it. Now you have to remember I'm getting these direct so maybe no I might have peeled it off too okay all right well what else um so it's interesting that you mentioned erythromycin um just because I think it's a, a, almost an odd choice just because erythromycin is most effective on uh gram positive bacteria which are less um common okay. in aquaria uh as far as what I recommend having on hand make sure that you either you have one medicine that is most effective against gram positive and one medicine that is effective against gram negative bacteria or just kind of keep something broad spe spectrum on hand um like what so i believe the um like the furan 2 the triple sulfa thin body care those are all going to be kind of broad spectrum and, and work against uh the gram negative and you do want to be careful with the erythromycin too, because that the bacteria that that targets is most like your beneficial bacteria. So I mean, you've been using it, and you know like what it does. Um, but if it's your first time using it, just kind of watch your parameters. And as far as that goes, um, parameters in general are the best medicine. You know, bingo. Clean water. If you have clean water, you are much less likely to have anything in your tank because you need both uh, stress in the fish and disease present. You can have disease present in the tank uh, and not have any problems right. with the fish, right. you know, if, if the water's clean. Just because it's, it's, it's been through this before in, it, you know, evolutionary speaking, um, it's built to resist this. Right. You know, it's when that fails, really, that the disease happens. So poor water quality will cause stress in your fish, yes. will, which will cause more, a higher possibility of disease to show itself. Exactly, because gotcha. you've just kind of um, lessened the fish's own immune system. Okay. And at that point, whatever's in the tank will just kind of swoop in, really. Because And that's how you find like the weird cases where someone hasn't added fish for like months, but then suddenly it happens. It was in there all along. Right. That's, um, and stress brought it out. Exactly. Um, and, you know, that is also why I use uh, stress coat in general. I just use it for all my um, water changes. I have a big old jug. I use this one for bagging. That's why it has all the, the writing on it. Um, but, yeah, I, I like that just kind of as a little extra. Mm-hmm. I like babying my fish. Nothing wrong with babying your fish. I see you have a big jug of pond salt. Yes. So that was my other thing. Like, it, it, it's very interesting. Like, 
I don't know why people are so polarized on salt. I, 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 I it, it's a thing. You, no you salt hate for it. me. Okay. Um, but I think it's actually very beneficial in small amounts. How small? Um, Tablespoon per five gallons? That's the normal dose. I will use, if I have plants, half a dose and just keep half a dose in there. Um, it's, it's, it's very weird. I, I've run against, I, I've had cases where I have a goldfish, right? Um, it presents like egg, you know, and most people tell you, you know, jack up the salt. I just did a regular dose of salt and whatever it was went away. Went away. And, and I don't think it was actually egg, but I think if the salt concentrations get low enough, I think that is another source of stress. Most water sources will have some. Yeah. Most water sources will have enough. But it's something to consider if you don't know what's going on. Yeah. To just put a little in there and see, hey, is this is this what's happening? Is, is this, you know, the key to my problems, basically? Um, and I actually run into that with KH a lot. Some water sources have no KH, and people have a really, really hard time with their pH, and they don't understand why. Right, right, right. And then that's definitely something to, to know. That's a whole other conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. We, we could talk about KH later. <laughs> If so, you have time. <laughs> so being a live bear nerd, you know, I, if you buy fish that have always been raised in water with salt, even just yeah. a little, you have to continue that. There's really no way to wean them off that. Mm -hmm. And I just refuse to do that because I'm cheap and lazy. So, you know, automatic water changes, I'm good. So okay. I don't buy any of those fish that have, that I know have been raised in water with salt. Right. And, and it, with man-bred fishes, I believe some of that is that you've bred the fish and not necessarily bred for immune strength. Mm -hmm. And if you do a certain amount of generations with the salt, it's, it's almost like a crutch. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. But that's only with things that you're breeding, like guppies, that you're, you're continuously breeding. I don't think it happens so much with... Um, a lot of other fish, unless they are really truly bred for color and body and, and yeah. stuff like that. If they're not allowed to choose a partners, basically, and have that variation. Right, right, right. So what else do you have there? Oh, and you say it, because I can't. Levamisol. Levamisol. Um, Goat dewormer. Yes. So off-label use. Um, so your mileage may vary. Uh, but I, I like this especially for the red worms, as you, red worms, as you call them. I can't pronounce what they're really called. I always get dyslexic. I always either call them, it's Camelonis or Calamonis, but I think I, I just I, it's I keep one of switching. Those. It's one of them. You yeah, say red worms. Yeah, the red worms, and this knocks them right out. Um, now, I've heard that Levamisol just gets them out of the fish, but they're still in the tank. There's, see, there, there's eggs is the thing. Uh, I believe this kills them, but there are eggs around. You want to do a very thorough gravel vacuum a few days after you treat with this. And because I can be lazy with that, <laughs> I tend to do a three dose treatment. I will dose, I will wait a week, I will dose again, and then two weeks after that, I will do my final dose, and nothing is alive. Well, none of the worms are alive. The fish are fine. Yeah, fish are fine. The fish are fine. So if you dose with that, then mm -hmm. gravel vac, do you have to disinfect your gravel vac? I would. Bleach? Yeah. I would, I would at least rinse it, probably bleach it, and then rinse it again. Yeah, that's what I would do, too. Yeah, because you, you run the risk of having an egg stuck to it. And then, boom, you have the same problem again. Right, which is not desirable. No. But, yeah. All right, so just to recap, you recommend having general cure? Yes, general cure, and then make sure that you have, you know, options as far as what you can actually treat with the medications that you have. Basically, gram-positive or less common bacteria have something that treats it, just so, you know, if, if nothing else is working, you have something that bam, can, can do it. Other than that, um, broad spectrum medications are the way to go. Like Furon 2? Yep, like Furon 2 or the Fit and Body Cure. Um, and just keep clean water. 
use good uh, dechlorinator. They're going to be happy. You, you will use much less medication if you actually, you know, just keep your parameters as they should. Um, they should be. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Say bye. Bye. All right. I think I figured out how I'm going to phrase it. I think I, I'm, I'm good now. Because I want to actually, like, key in on the names of them as far as what types of things you want to have on the end. Okay, that's good. All right. Are we, are we doing this? Uh, are you ready? Sure. Okay. All right, fishy folks. I'm here with fellow fish nerd Kelly again. Not Kelly. Callie. Because I suck. I'm going to start over. <laughs> Hi, fishy folks. I'm here with... Callie again. I mess up her name. Callie? Callie. Like the state. Yes. Take... I've heard worse though. Okay, take three. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh god.